Hi, my little guinea pigs. Today, we will perform a VV section. Ah, oh, come on, don't panic. Uh, we will perform that on the Amiga itself. In this third part, we will deep dive into the Amiga architecture and discover how those action replay actually work. Please hang on to your exercise wheels, it will get very technical. The Amiga architecture was clearly in advance on its time. Let's get a refresher about it. This is roughly how the architecture looks like. On the left hand side you have the CPU, the Motorola 68000 at 7MHz. Like any other CPUs, uh, they communicate with the system through an address bus and a data bus. What we notice is that the extension port is actually very close to the CPU itself. And it is not by mistake. Every single pins out of uh, the CPU is actually exposed through this port. So what does make this architecture special? It is special because of those three coprocessors. They are called uh, Agnus, Denise and Polar. Those were the first versions of those three processors. Uh, during the lifetime of the Amiga, they evolved and uh, got upgraded. Agnus is actually the, the most complex one, uh, and it's a real coprocessor that can actually execute a little program by itself, independently from the CPU, uh, called a copper list. And uh, this copper list was actually synchronized with the video output. That's where all those like uh, awesome effects are coming from. Uh, when you have like Amiga demos. Those uh, three coprocessors were living in their own space. Uh, they were sharing what we call a register address bus that was completely independent from uh, the, actual, um, the actual main address bus and main data bus. And now, the key thing to understand about this architecture, Gary. Gary is um, a kind of orchestrator, right? It's uh, an address decoder that actually arbitrates between all those peripherals so they don't conflict on, the, on those uh, shared buses. Specifically, Gary ac activates a latch that sits on the data bus between the CPU and those three uh, coprocessors so they can access uh, the RAM independently. So let's have a look at the first trick those action replays are actually doing to take over the computer. Through one of those pins that are exposed through this extension port, the pin called OVR, like override, the action replay can actually instruct Gary to deactivate itself. So this is how the memory, original memory map of uh, an Amiga looks like. So when the button is pressed, the action replay triggers OVR that basically unmap every single peripheral from the memory space. Then it activates its own address spaces that are usually inactivated, so it, it stays completely st stealth on the system. The next thing the action replay is doing is generating what we call a non-maskable interrupt. So a non-maskable interrupt will instruct the CPU to save its, its context and then jump from the table that is at the beginning of the memory to a specific address. Here, the action replay spoof this address and instruct 
the CPU to jump in in its own activated address space. Once the cartridge took over, it flipped back everything to, to normal. So that was the technique for the old uh, Mark II and Mark I. The Mark III is even more brutal than this. It generates the interrupt the same way, but when the CPU tries to read for the vector address, it answers just before the run. That's why it makes this cartridge very dependent on the 68000. The smartest guinea pigs from the lab would notice that we are actually missing something. What about this like little address space we were talking about, those three coprocessors up there? A lot of those uh, registers in this register space are actually write only. You can only write them from the, from the CPU uh, through FAT Agnes. Then how the action replay can guess what was the state of this address space. The trick is that the action Mark III is actually always on the bus through the expression port. So it does spy on everything the CPU is actually doing. And from there, it can actually accumulate the state that it thinks these, those registers are into and can restore them when you exit the cartridge uh, UI uh, through a series of instructions. That's all, my little guinea pigs. Uh, I hope you enjoy those three parts on the action replay. And please subscribe uh, or leave a comment if I miss anything uh, in those explanations.